let us try to understand what the sets are using a few examples and the first one would be let's say that I want to write down all the vowels in English alphabet and I think this is a pretty straightforward one English alphabet so you would say that they would be a e i o and u let us take another example let us say that we write down the odd numbers odd numbers between 1 2 10 and i'm just taking two examples there could be many you can make your own so they would be 1 3 5 7 and 9 and you can take any you know further for example you can just write natural numbers natural numbers between let's say 5 and 5 and 10 so they would be 6 7 8 and 9 and we are assuming that 5 and 10 are not to be included so these are the natural numbers between now if you look at these three examples and then we will generalize what let's let's look at the first first example vowels in the english alphabet so what we have here is a collection of letters from the english alphabet and the characteristic of each of these letters in this collection is that it is a vowel of the english alphabet second example it is a collection of numbers and the property of each of these is that it's an odd number between 1 to 10 the third example is that it's a natural number between 5 and 10 each element of this collection of numbers is a natural number between 5 and 10 so this is what brings us to a concept of a set in mathematics if we have to represent this collections right collections of things that is where we use the concept of sets so all a set is is just that it's nothing but a well-defined collection of elements so how do i mathematically represent this collection of vowels all we do is we use a capital letter put an equal to sign start with the curly brace and we list all the members a e i o and u so we call this as a set a now this you should read as set a comprises of elements a e i o and u and you know the rule is that they are all vowels in english al alphabet similarly if you want to represent the second collection of these numbers you would say that b equals 1 3 5 7 and 9 and this is another set a set b now one more thing as to how do you denote mathematically that a particular element is a member of a set so for example i want to say that this small a here a vowel a is a member of the set a so mathematically we would state something like this a this is the symbol which you have to re read as belongs to this symbol states a belongs to the set a this is how you should be reading it now if i were to have an element n does it belong to a no so we would just say a does not belong to n this is the sign of does not belong to okay uh, now there is one more thing that i would like to touch upon is representing sets in different forms representing sets now we already learned one way of representing and i said that and i'll just take one example wherein i say that a set a you should read it set a has a e i o and u these are the elements now if you look at this form what happens is that we have to written down all the elements that belong to the set now let us look at another way 
of writing down the same description of a set so instead of writing down all the elements what we will do is a is a set which comprises of let us say that we are using a variable x where this x x is a vowel in english alphabet in english now you can see the difference between these two here we simply straight away in the first representation of a set we just write down each and every element whereas in the second representation we just use a variable and then describe the rule by which this variable has to take value so this variable x will take different values so all the variables so all, all the letters right which satisfy this rule of being a vowel in the english alphabet will be members of the set so you can convert between these two forms right if you are given this you can come up with this form now mathematicians they call this as a roster form roster form of representation and this form in which we write a general rule this is known as a set builder form set builder form so this was a quick introduction to what do you really mean by sets in the next videos we'll continue with some further discussion about definitions on sets